Hello friends, this is Dr. Ganga, your nephrology educator at Prep Ladder. Today we are going to start the first topic of a very important series that is hemodialysis. So first let us learn what is the approach to renal replacement therapy which involves hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis and renal transplantation and also let us learn about the vascular access for hemodialysis. Now approach to renal replacement therapy, when should renal replacement therapy be started? So renal replacement therapy we know can be classified into hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis and transplant. So as we go on discussing about hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis and transplant, I will be telling in which sort of patients what is suitable. Like for example, they tell while initiating dialysis, it is better to initiate on PD, then eventually convert to HD over 2 to 3 years. This is found to have the best outcome. In patients with good residual renal function, it is said that it is better to start PD than HD. Okay. Similarly, transplant is considered the best of all forms of renal replacement therapy. Now, when if you decide to start on dialysis, when should dialysis be started? There are two approaches to this. First is clinical approach and next is lab result based approach. So clinical approach means when are you going to start? Clinical approach means patient is going to have uremic symptoms. So what could the uremic symptoms be? Patient can have fatigue. Reduced appetite, loss of weight, vomiting. Okay, so once the uremic symptoms start, irrespective of the level of urea or creatinine, you are going to start dialysis. So, this is the non urgent indication to start dialysis. There are urgent clinical indications to start dialysis like uremic encephalopathy, uremic pericarditis. So in this situation, you don't wait for any, clean, any other lab parameters. You straight away go ahead and start dialysis. So the thing is, if you wait till these symptoms set in to start dialysis, then what are you going to risk? You are going to risk patient having malnutrition. And hence, patient can have increased mortality. Now, coming to the laboratory approach of starting RRT or starting dialysis. For example, you assume you take a random value of creatinine more than 10 or urea more than 100. Okay. So, should you start dialysis for this random value? The answer is always going to be no because if patient has no clinical symptoms then they are not going to accept for dialysis. Okay, that is the first and the foremost thing. Then if you start early dialysis, you are going to run out of vascular access even in HD, even in PD. So, it is not advisable to start early dialysis. Okay, so there were trials conducted also where EG, it was dialysis was started at EGFR 9 versus EGFR of, uh, EGFR of 7 and they found no difference in outcome. So, generally when EGFR is less than 5, we call it end stage renal disease. We know that CKD stage 5 is between 0 to 15 of EGFR. In that, when EGFR is less than 5, we call it end stage renal disease when renal replacement therapy is used. So, we have to use a combination of this clinical and laboratory parameters to initiate dialysis. Like for example, when patient has early signs of fatigue, you ask them how they were when compared to one year before because these are symptoms that slowly set in. Patient might not feel anything. So, you ask them how they felt when compared to one year before and then you use the laboratory parameters like hyperkalemia or creatinine is more 